Evolution is a pretty amazing process that's constantly creating new ways to ensure the survival of a given species. And this can sometimes lead to incredible specialization. Those special skills at times are truly staggering when it comes to animals. From the animal with the greatest balance of all time to the sleepiest gastropod in the universe, here's 20 animals that can do impossible things. <sighs> Number 20, mountain goats. Mountain goats don't look like they'd be graceful with their woolly fur and horns, but their cloven hooves help them balance on narrow ledges that are only a few centimeters wide, and their strong legs let them jump nearly 12 feet. It's fair to say that this animal violates all the laws of physics, but why do they go so far up? The obvious answer is so they could live away from bears, cougars, wolves, and golden eagles, which are all dangerous predators. They climb to get plants, grasses, and alpine foliage that they can eat. It's also been said that goats like to lick rocks on the sides of mountains because of the salts in the rocks and stones. Goats don't just go up and down mountains. Goats in the southwest of Morocco have been seen climbing trees to get fruit. Goats are also good at stuff you might not expect. Recently, hundreds of goats were let loose in Ventura County, California to clear brush and help stop forest fires. A few years ago, the internet was all about myotonic goats, which are goats that pass out when they're scared. Mountain goats have two toes, and their hooves are soft, rubbery pads with a hard outer layer that spread out to help them keep their balance and hold on to stuff. Their strong front legs help them climb, and their thick coat keeps them warm and keeps water away at high altitudes. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. A snail can sleep for three years at a time. In the animal world, you gotta be tough really tough to make it. Surviving in the wild is not easy. You have to deal with harsh weather and fight off dangerous predators. Sounds like a lot of work, right? Maybe it'd be a good idea to just try and sleep through it all. When it comes to sleeping, snails are king. We might call them sleep crazy. They can sleep for a few hours, then stay awake for 30 or more hours. On the other hand, they can also sleep for up to three years at a time. Three years! It's a survival instinct that helps them stay alive when they gotta. Some snails go to sleep for the winter. They may also do the same thing in the summer if there's a drought. During hibernation, a snail seals the opening of its shell with a dry layer of mucus called an epiphragum. It helps the snail stay moist. Most land snails that breathe air, called pluminates, have courtship rituals before they mate. The date could go for anywhere from 2 to 12 hours. Before mating, land snails and slugs in some families fire one or more love darts into the bodies of their partners. These animals are truly the cupids of the animal world. Number 18. Owls can twist their heads 270 degrees. So yeah, owls can turn their necks up to 270 degrees without breaking blood vessels or tearing tendons, just like in that movie The Exorcist. People and most other animals can simply move their eyes to follow an object or look around a room, but owls have to turn their heads to do the same thing. Because their eye sockets are fixed, their eyeballs can't move, and it means they gotta stretch their necks, which looks like a miracle. Owls are more flexible than people because their heads only have one socket pivot connecting them. People only have two, which makes it hard to twist. Owls also have a lot of vertebrae, which are small bones in the neck and back that help them move in a variety of ways. Even so, a bird's body shouldn't be able to handle so much movement no matter how strong its bones are. People would bleed and break all over inside if their heads were spinning like that. Owls have backup arteries that allow them to get nutrients even when their blood vessels are blocked by turning quickly. The arteries also get bigger to stock up any extra blood that's needed. With their big eyes, spinning heads, and scary sounds, these birds belong in horror movies. Number 17. African lungfish can survive out of water for a year. The African lungfish is an ancient fish that can move through water, mud, and on land. The West African lungfish are animals that evolved a long time ago. Since they've been the same for about 400 million years, they're sometimes called living fossils. West African lungfish have a primitive lung and can live in a state called estivation, which is similar to hibernation. Both of these adaptations have helped them stay alive. Lungfish, like all fish, have gills that help them get oxygen from the water. Because their lungs have changed over time, lungfish can also get oxygen from the air. The West African lungfish uses its mouth to dig a hole for itself. It eats the wet soil and spits out the mud through its gills. 
The pace of life for a West African lungfish is very slow. This means they don't move around as much as other fish and usually rest at the bottom of a lake or river. In fact, West African lungfish are so quiet that many aquarium owners think that their fish is dead when it's not. Now I'm wondering, would I rather be a lungfish or a snail? They both sound pretty chill to be honest. Number 16. Stonefish are the most poisonous fish in the world. The family of fish that includes stonefish is called Cynocidae. They're well known for being the most venomous fish in the world with a sting that hurts real bad. I mean, really bad. Their name comes from the fact that they blend in with rocky seafloors and coral, which makes them dangerous because people can easily step on them. The venom can kill both other sea creatures and people. It causes severe pain, trouble breathing, heart damage, fits, and paralysis. Even though there's an anti-venom, if it isn't given quickly, the effects are fatal. On their backs, they have 13 spines, which is what delivers the venom. At the base of each spine is a venom sac that releases the venom when it's stepped on. Their main way of hunting is to sit still on the ocean floor and wait for prey to come by. But their venom is only used to protect themselves. They never go chasing after prey or people. Number 15. Black Mambas have super snake speed. The color of a black mamba is, in fact, brown. The name comes from the fact that inside of their mouths are blue-black, which they show when they feel threatened. Black mambas are fast, nervous, have venom that can kill, and are super aggressive. People have blamed them for killing a lot of people, and African myths greatly exaggerate what they can do. Because of those things, the black mamba is often thought to be the deadliest snake in the world. The savannas and rocky hills of southern and eastern Africa are home to black mambas. They're the longest venomous snakes in Africa. They can grow up to 14 feet long, but about 8 feet is more typical. They're also among the world's fastest snakes, able to move up to 12.5 miles per hour. Before the black mamba anti-venom was made, a bite from this dangerous snake almost always killed the person within 20 minutes. Sadly, anti-venom is still not widely available in rural areas where the mamba lives, so deaths from the mamba bites still happen pretty frequently. Human invasion of the black mamba's territory puts stress on the species and makes it even more likely that people will come into dangerous contact with these snakes. When confronted, black mambas are shy and will almost always try to get away, but when cornered, these snakes will raise their heads, sometimes with a third of their bodies off the ground, spread their neck flaps like a cobra, open their black mouths, and hiss. If the attacker doesn't go away, the mamba will strike more than once, each time injecting a lot of powerful neuro and cardio toxin. And that's bad news. Number 14. Dung beetles are crazy strong. Dung beetles are most likely to be found where there's, well, funnily enough, a lot of dung. They fall into three main groups, those that roll, those that dig, and those that live. Those words explain what the beetles do with the poop they find. There's dung beetles all over the world, except for on Antarctica. They live in places as different as deserts and forests. The rollers make balls out of bits of dung and roll them away from the pile. They hide their balls so they can eat it later or just use it to lay their eggs. Tunnelers hide their treasure in dung by digging a tunnel under the pile. And livers live inside of the dung, as you might have guessed. People say that the dung beetle is the strongest insect on Earth. They can push balls of fresh animal poop that weigh more than 200 times their body weight. Researchers saw one dung beetle push a ball that was 1,141 times its own weight. This would be the same as a 150 pound person moving an incredible 80 tons. Most of them prefer droppings from herbivores, which are animals that only eat plants, but some will look for droppings from omnivores, which eat both plants and meat. When an animal like an elephant chews, swallows, and digests its food, there's always parts of the food that pass through the body without being broken down. These pieces are passed out of the animal in its dung, which is what the dung beetle eats. The young dung beetles, called larvae, eat the solid dung. The adults, on the other hand, tend to stick to liquids. Dung has a lot of healthy moisture in it, and adult beetles drink it up. Are you guys feeling as hungry as I am yet? Number 13. Emperor penguins dive really deep. Emperor penguins are the biggest of all penguins, with an average height of 45 inches. These animals can't fly, so they live on the ice of Antarctica and in the cold waters around it. Penguins have changed their bodies and learned to work together to survive in a harsh environment where the wind chill can reach negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And in case you're wondering, that's very cold. They huddle together to keep warm and stop the wind from getting to them. And they take turns moving to the protected and relatively warm center of the group. Once a penguin is warmed up a little bit, it moves to the edge of the group to protect the others from the cold. 
Emperor penguins spend the long winters on the open ice, where they even have their babies. Females lay just one egg, which they then leave behind. They go on a long trip to hunt that lasts about two months, and depending on how big the ice pack is, the female may travel 50 miles just to get to the ocean. There they eat fish, squid, and krill. In the ocean, emperor penguins can dive deeper than any other bird, to a depth of 1,850 feet, and they can stay under for more than 20 minutes. Number 12. Ringtail lemurs outstink each other. Lemurs are primates that can only be found on the island of Madagascar in Africa and a few small islands that are close by. Because Madagascar is so far away from the rest of the world, it's home to many amazing animals that just can't be found anywhere else. Lemurs may have gotten there thousands of years ago on rafts of plants and grown and changed in isolation for thousands of years. The long black and white stripes of the ring-tailed lemur's tail make it easy to spot. They live in a lot of zoos and are always popular with visitors. Ring-tailed lemurs have strong scent glands, and they use their smell to communicate with each other and even to fight other lemurs. Lemurs mark their territory with smells, letting anyone who can smell know they're there. When it's time to mate, the male lemurs fight for dominance by trying to smell worse than the other. They put smelly secretions on their long tails and wave them in the air to see which animal is stinkier. A gland in the wrist makes a smell that's strong but doesn't last quite as long. A gland in the shoulder makes a brown substance that looks like toothpaste and lasts much longer. So basically, male lemurs wave their tails and blow a scent at their rivals, causing a smelly standoff that lasts until one of them finally backs off. If it was me, it would be very fast. Number 11. Male seahorses get pregnant and give birth. The seahorse is a pretty strange looking fish that swims upright. There's more than 45 species that live in the coastal waters of the world, and scientists know some of their basic biology, but there's still a lot they don't really know about these interesting animals. Even though its head looks like that of a horse, each seahorse has its own style. Most have spots, speckles, or stripes, and some have frills, spikes, and crowns on their skin. The colors are different, and they can change with a twitch of a muscle. It helps them hide from enemies or even find a mate. Even though it looks nothing like a fish, it is very much a fish. Along with its head in the shape of a horse, it has eyes like a chameleon that can move on their own, and a tail that can grab things, sort of like a hand. Male seahorses get pregnant, which is something that only they and other animals in the family Cygnathidae can do. This family also includes pipefish and sea dragons. During mating, the female puts her eggs into the male's brood pouch using a tube called a ovipositor. He then lays an egg, feeds it, and carries it until it's born, which usually takes two to four weeks. He'll then give birth to a fully grown fry, which could be anywhere from a few dozen to more than a thousand, depending on the species. When newborn seahorses are set adrift, they're vulnerable to predators right away, and few of them make it through their first few days. Number 10. Beavers have metal teeth. Beavers are known for how busy they are, and they use their skills to change the landscape in a way that few other animals do. Beavers dig holes in the banks of rivers and lakes whenever they can, but they also change habitats that aren't as good by building dams. They cut down trees and chew on them with their strong teeth and jaws. Then they build huge structures out of logs, branches, and mud to block streams and turn fields and forests into large ponds that beavers love. On land, these big rodents move in a clumsy way, but in the water, they're very graceful. Their big webbed back feet work like swimming fins and their paddle-shaped tails steer them. Beavers can swim up to 5 miles per hour because of these things, and they can stay underwater for 15 minutes without coming up for air. Their eyelids are clear and work a lot like goggles. Their fur is oily and waterproof by nature. Beaver's teeth might not be the most attractive, and in fact, their teeth are actually made of different chemicals than human teeth, so they're dark orange. The front side of a beaver's tooth has a thick enamel made of iron, which keeps the teeth strong. Yep, literally iron teeth. Badass and, I guess, like, sort of steampunk? Number 9. Immortal jellyfish are, well, immortal. A new study says that swarm by swarm, an immortal jellyfish species that can age backwards, the Benjamin Button of the Deep, is slowly taking over the world's oceans. The immortal jellyfish, just like the movie character Benjamin Button, changes from an adult to a baby and back again. However, unlike Benjamin, the jellyfish can do this over and over and over, and it seems to only do so when it needs to. 
The scientific name for the immortal jellyfish is Turritopsis dorni. When it's fully grown, it's about as wide as a person's pinky nail. It was found in the Mediterranean Sea in 1883. But its special skill wasn't found out until the 1990s. Most of the time, it reproduces the old-fashioned way by having sperm and eggs float around and then eventually meet. They usually die the old-fashioned way too, that is, being eaten by something bigger. But when it's hungry, hurt, or facing other problems instead of sure death, it transforms all of its existing cells into a younger state. The jellyfish changes into a cyst that looks like a blob. The cyst glows into a polyp colony, which is the first stage of a jellyfish's life. During the process, the cells of the jellyfish are often completely changed. Muscle cells can change into nerve cells, sperm, or even eggs. Through asexual reproduction, the polyp colony can make hundreds of jellyfish that are genetically identical to the original adult. These jellyfish are called near-perfect copies. Number 8. Tardigrades are indestructible. Tardigrades are tiny, eight-legged animals that have been to space and would probably live through the end of the world. Plus, they look like cute little bears, which is a nice bonus. I mean, I say cute. Cute if you like bears that look like they came from a horrifying futuristic nightmare. There's about 1,300 different kinds of tardigrades in the world. They're thought to be aquatic because they do need a thin layer of water around their bodies to keep from drying out. However, they've been seen in many different places from the deep sea to sand dunes. The name moss piglet comes from the fact that they like to live in fresh water where there's mosses and lichens. Even though they look soft, tardigrades have a tough cuticle, just like grasshoppers, praying mantis, and other insects they're related to do. Like those insects, tardigrades have to lose their cuticles in order to grow. They have four to six claws on each foot, which helps them stick to plants. They also have a special mouth part called a bucko paryngeal apparatus, which lets them get nutrients from plants and microorganisms. They're a part of an elite group called extremophiles. These are animals that can live in places where most others can't. For example, tardigrades can live without food or water for up to 30 years. They can also live in temperatures as cold as absolute zero or as hot as boiling, at pressure six times that of the ocean's deepest trenches and in the vacuum of space. Number seven, peacock mantis shrimps throw the fastest punch. Mantis shrimps are related to crabs and lobsters. They're super aggressive and they kill their prey with painful jabs. Their secret weapons are a pair of hinged arms that they fold up under their heads and can open up very quickly. The spearer species have arms that end in a sharp, barb-covered spike that they use to kill fish and other soft animals. The bigger smasher species, on the other hand, have arms that end in heavy clubs that they use to hit with the same force as a rifle bullet. The strike is one of the fastest movements of a limb in all of the animal kingdom. It's even more impressive when you think about how much water slows things down. Some scientists think that the aggressive nature of mantis shrimps developed because of the rock cracks that they live in that are hard to get, like a parking spot in New York. These animals are also smarter than most shrimp because of this competition. They're the only invertebrates that can recognize members of their own species and remember how a fight with a rival went for up to a whole month. Number six. Clownfish change genders. All right, everyone, get ready. If certain politicians hear this, I'm pretty sure their heads are gonna explode. So anyone with kids or a Disney Plus subscription probably thinks they know everything there is to know about the clownfish. What they might not know is that the heroes of Finding Nemo are called false anemone fish. True anemone fish look almost exactly the same, but their shapes are slightly different and they live in different places. All clownfish are born male. They can change gender, but they only do it to become the most powerful female in a group. This change can't be reversed back. At least 30 types of clownfish are known, and most of them live in shallow water in the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, and the Western Pacific. They don't live in the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, or the Caribbean. So I guess if you're ever tasked with coming up for the voice of a cartoon clownfish, don't go with like a Greek or Italian accent, and don't go with a Caribbean accent. Number five, axolotls regenerate body parts. The axolotl is said to be related to Xolotl, the Aztec god of fire and lightning, who turned himself into a salamander to avoid being killed. But these Mexican amphibians are already pretty amazing on their own since they can grow back lost limbs and stay young all their lives. The axolotls never grow out of their larval or juvenile stage, which is different from other salamanders that change into something else. This is called neoteny. People have been interested in axolotls for a long time. When they were first brought from Mexico to Paris in 1864, people became even more interested. Europeans all over the continent started breeding them. 
This was the start of a big market for salamanders as pets since they're easy to breed in captivity. When they're young, feathery gills grow from the tops of their heads like a mane. They also have webbed feet, a dorsal fin that runs the length of their bodies, and a tail. Adult oxalotls still have gills, but they also have lungs that work and can breathe through their skin. And as if being babies forever wasn't cute enough, their mouths are turned up in a Mona Lisa smile all the time. When it's time to eat, those cute little smiles quickly turn into a vacuum cleaner. Axolotls eat crustaceans, mollusks, insect eggs, and small fish by sucking them in. Biologists also like to study axolotls because they can grow back lost or damaged parts of their bodies like limbs, hearts, spinal cords, and even parts of their brain. Number 4. Honey badgers are resistant to venom. Some people say honey badgers don't care, and now we know for sure, honey badger doesn't care. New studies show that this crazy, nasty-ass animal doesn't care about snakes because it's immune to their venom. Every year, poisonous snakes kill up to 94,000 people in addition to the millions of other animals they eat. And it's not pretty to die from a venomous snake bite. Toxins and venom can stop muscles from working, break down tissue, and even cause people to bleed out of control. But, uh, if Richard is still here... But why does the honey badger even need to be resistant to venom? Why doesn't it just avoid venomous snakes like the rest of us mammals? Well, up to 25% of the honey badger's all-vegetable diet is made up of venomous snakes. But the honey badgers don't just eat snakes because they're hungry. Being able to resist snake venom is like being the only person at a party who can eat the extra hot salsa. You get to eat it all by yourself. Number 3. Great white sharks can sniff out blood from miles away. Even though the shark in Jaws was based on a great white shark in New Jersey, the fish isn't nearly as scary as it is in that movie. As scientists learn more about these elusive predators, the idea that they're mindless killers is starting to fade. But this doesn't mean they're not scary. They have a crazy knack for finding blood. They can find a drop of blood in a 25-gallon bucket or detect it from three miles away. They're also the largest predatory fish on Earth. They live in cool coastal waters all over the world, and they grow to be about 15 feet long on average, but people have seen some that were well over 20 feet long and weighed up to 5,000 pounds. Their mouths are lined with up to 300 sharp triangular teeth that are arranged in rows, and they have a great sense of smell that helps them find prey. They even have organs that can pick up on the tiny electric fields that animals give off. They eat other sharks, crustaceans, mollusks, seabirds, and did we say other sharks? Whale sharks that are bigger will also eat sea lions, seals, and small whales with teeth like orcas. People have seen this species eat dead whales too. Number 2. Jesus Christ Lizard Can Run On Water if you want to hear a bunch of stuff about Jesus walking on water, then I guess a Bible expert's probably the person to go to. But if you want to know how the Jesus lizards do it for real, you can listen to scientists. It's because it's super fast and has special feet, and the basilisk lizard can run on water. Most animals sink when they try to walk or run across water. And this is because water doesn't really provide that much of a support or resistance compared to solid ground. But this lizard does an awesome thing. They have a slap, stroke, and recovery, which are three parts of a stride that allow them to run on water. During the slap, the foot mostly moves straight down. Most of the time, it moves backwards during the stroke. And during the recovery, the foot moves up and out of the water and back to where it was in the beginning of the step. During the slap phase, the lizard's foot drives straight down, pushing water down and away from the foot and making a pocket of air around the foot. This pocket of air is what helps out the lizard. During the stroke phase, when they move forward by kicking their leg back through the water, the slap gives them enough support to keep their bodies above the water's surface. I wonder if there's a lizard that can, you know, like part a lake in two with a big open part in the middle to walk through. Number 1. Bombardier Beetle Sprays Acid From Its Rear Bombardier beetles are notorious for being able to make and shoot out quick bursts of stinky, burning hot liquid from their back ends. Other insects can be killed by these smelly gases, or they can scare away potential predators. And their name Bombardier beetles comes from these chemical bombs. Bombardier's emissions can come out slowly or short, hot bursts that can burn and stain human skin. Their acidic defenses hurt the eyes and lungs of their enemies, often making them unable to move for a short time. It's not easy to make a chemical bomb inside your body that gets so hot it boils. So these tiny beetles use a complicated system of reservoirs and chambers inside their bodies to safely make the blasts and mix them together when they're ready to get let out. 
What other amazing animal skills have you heard of? Which one of these superpowers would you most want to have yourself? Let us know in the comments below. And check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.